Mr. Constancio, the ECBS today published the May 2017 Financial Stability Review. What are the key risks to euro area financial stability? Well, you know, the uh, world economy and the European economy are growing stronger, and that's good also for financial stability. Nevertheless, of course, there are always risks. And uh, the risks are uh, resulting from the fact that since September last year, the prospects of higher growth and in the end medium term higher inflation led to a big change in financial markets. The uh, investors started to buy more shares and less bonds, which uh, led then to the increase of price of shares, which in some parts of the world, not Europe, are already uh, overstretched. And bonds uh, saw their prices go down. And that's the main risk that we highlight in our financial stability review. Because this uh, decrease in the price of uh, bonds implies uh, losses for the, the institutions and segments of the financial system that are the holders of such bonds. At the same time, this uh, decrease in the price of bonds means an increase in market uh, uh, interest rates. And that's uh, another element of uh, the risk. Uh, the second risk uh, is connected with the still low profitability of banks in the euro area uh, as a result of still low nominal growth and some structural uh, uh, issues that uh, we face. Third risk has to do with the further stress resulting from the burden of servicing the debt as a result of the higher market interest rates. Mm -hmm. And that put, puts challenges to adapt sustainability both to the public sector and to the private sector, the agents that are more heavily uh, indebted. And finally, uh, we highlight uh, a risk that has uh, uh, subsided, uh, which is the liquidity risk in the non-bank financial part of the financial system uh, because there is a growing mismatch between the maturities of assets and the maturities of liabilities. The next two years of Brexit negotiations will be marked by a lot of uncertainty. How come you're so optimistic when it comes to its impact to euro area financial stability? Well, the point is that, of course, uh, uh, Brexit is very significant for the UK, uh, but in view of the relative size, it's much uh, less meaningful for the rest of the EU. Mm -hmm. Uh, for instance, the rest of the EU just exports to the UK 4% of total GDP and trade is not going to disappear with Brexit. Uh, then, if you, we look to financing coming out of London for the firms uh, in the rest of the EU, we see that total uh, bank financing coming out of London uh, represents only 1-2% to 2 of total external financing of the economic agents in the rest of the EU. And many of the banks that are providing such, such financing out of London are banks that belong to countries in the continent, and which means that they can easily substitute the financing that they are now providing out of London from their uh, headquarters uh, in the continent. Uh, and at the same time, we already see that even third country uh, institutions that operate in London are also starting to relocate to the uh, continent. So this relocation will uh, continue. Regarding capital markets um, in London, uh, where there are uh, significant capital markets, the issuance of debt or equities in uh, London by uh, firms of the rest of the EU represent only 10% of the total issuance of debt and e equities of uh, uh, such firms, which again is absorbable. Uh, it will not disappear altogether. Uh, firms will continue to issue in London as they issue in New York. Uh, of course, there will be a reduction that can easily be absorbed in the rest of the EU. And that's, by the way, why it is very important to uh, quickly develop the project of the Capital Markets Union because it becomes more necessary uh, with Brexit. And uh, uh, indeed, uh, this uh, is something that looks altogether 
to all the factors that I mentioned uh, means that Brexit can really not harm uh, significantly the ongoing recovery in the euro area. Thank you.